What's going on guys? This is Burr back with the Odin Project and today we're going to be working on the HTML boilerplate section. An HTML document, all HTML docu documents have the same basic structure or boilerplate that needs to be in place before anything useful can be done. In this lesson we will explore the different parts of this boilerplate and see how it all fits together. This section contains a general overview of topics that you will learn in this lesson. How to write the basic boilerplate for an HTML document, how to open HTML documents in your browser, creating an HTML file. To demonstrate an HTML boilerplate, we first need an HTML file to work with. Create a new folder on your computer and name it HTML boilerplate. Within that folder, create a new file and name it index.html. All right, so we're going to minimize this. How do I just minimize? Okay. Create a new folder on your computer. We're going to do it in documents and HTML boilerplate. And within that folder, create a new file and name it index.html. I guess we should really be doing this um, in the command line. You're probably already familiar with a lot of different types of files, for example, doc, PDF, and image files. To let the computer know we want to create an HTML file, we need to append the file name with .html extension as we have done when creating the index.html file. It is worth noting that we named our file our HTML file index. We should always name the HTML file that will contain the home page of our website's index.html. This is because web servers will by default look for an index.html page when users land on our websites, and not having one will cause big problems. The doc type. Every HTML page starts with a doc type declaration. The doc type's purpose is to tell the browser what version of HTML it should use to render the document. The latest version of HTML is HTML5, and the doc type for that version is simply doc type HTML. The doc types for older versions of HTML were built were a bit more complicated. For example, this is a doc type declaration for HTML4. Okay. However, we probably don't won't ever want to be using an older version of HTML, and so we'll always use doc type HTML. Open the index HTML file created earlier in your text editor and add doc type HTML to the first line. So we're going to open with Visual Studio Code, and hopefully we can get this minimized here like so I don't know why my mouse is having such a hard time here Okay. There we go. All right. So, um, open the index file and add doc type HTML to the very first line. After we declare the doc type, we need to provide an HTML element. This is what's known as the root element of the document, meaning that every other element in the document will be a descendant of it. This becomes more important later on when we learn about manipulating HTML with JavaScript. For now, just know that the HTML element should be included on every HTML document. Back in the index.html file, let's add the HTML element by typing out its opening and closing tags like so. So we're going to do html lang equals english all right and it added it for us 
What is the language? Lang attribute. Lang specifies the language of the text content in that element. This attribute is primarily used for improving accessibility of the web page. It allows assistive technologies, for example, screen readers, to adapt according to the language and invoke correct pronun pronunciation. The head element is where we put important meta information about our web pages and stuff required for our web pages to render correctly in the browser. Inside the head, we should not use any element that displays content on the web page. The char set meta element. We should always have the meta tag for the char set encoding of the web page in the head element. Setting the encoding is very important because it ensures that the web page will display special symbols and characters from different languages correctly in the browser. Title element. Another element we should always include in the head of an HTML document is the title element. The title element is used to give web pages a human readable title, which is displayed in our web pages browser tab, which would be up here. Um, if we didn't include a title element, the web page's title would default to its file name. In our case, that would be index.html, which isn't very meaningful for users. This would make it very difficult to find our web page if the user has many browser tabs open. There are many more elements that can go within the head of an HTML document, however, for now, it's only crucial to know about the two elements we have covered here. We will introduce more elements that go into the head throughout the rest of the curriculum. Back in our index.html file, let's add a head element with a char set meta element and a title within it. The head element goes within the HTML element and should always be the first element under the opening HTML tag. All right, so we've got HTML lang, and then we've got head. All right, and then we're gonna put in meta char set equals UTF dash eight And a title within it. So now let's do title, title my first web page. And then we got our closing head bracket and our closing HTML bracket. Body element. The final element needed to complete the HTML boilerplate is the body element. This is where all the content that will be displayed to users will go. The text images, lists, links, and so on. To complete the boilerplate, add a body element to the index file. The body element also goes within the HTML element and is always below the head element, like so. So below this, we want to do body. Viewing HTML files in the browser. The HTML boilerplate in the index file is complete at this point, but how do you view it in the browser? There are a couple different options. In order to avoid branching our lessons instructions to accommodate for all the differences between browsers, we are going to be using Google Chrome as our primary browser for the remainder of this course. All references to the browser will pertain specifically to Google Chrome. We strongly suggest that you use Google Chrome for all of your testing going forward. You can drag and drop an HTML file from your text editor into the address bar of your browser. All right, let's try to do that. Okay, um, you can find the HTML file in your file system and then double click it. This will open the file in the default browser your system uses. You can use the terminal to open the file in your browser. Um, navigate to the directory containing the file and type Google Chrome index.html. Using one of the methods above, open up the index file we have been working on. You'll notice the screen is blank. This is because we don't have anything in our body. But why is the I don't think I opened that properly. Um, where's Google Chrome? All right, so I put the title. So like, why is the title not showing up? Maybe we'll figure that out. Maybe I'm not opening it properly. Um, or maybe I need to save it. Come on, Birder. Now let's try to open it. Yeah, there we go. I did not save the code. That's why. All right. 
Um, back in the index file, let's add a heading. More on these later to the body and save the file. So in within the body, we're gonna add each one, each one. Hello, world. All right, and save and refresh. And there we go, we got hello world. Now if you refresh the page in the browser, you should see the changes take effect and the heading hello world will be displayed. VS Code shortcut. VS Code has a built-in shortcut you can use for generating all the boilerplate in one go. Please note that this shortcut cut only works while editing a file with the HTML extension or a text file with the HTML language already selected. To trigger the shortcut, delete everything in the index HTML file and just enter exclamation on the first line. Delete exclamation. This will bring up a couple options. Press the enter key to choose the first one. Oh, there we go. This will bring up, uh, and voila, you should have all the boilerplate populated for you. We do. But it's still good to know how to write the boilerplate yourself in case you find yourself using a text editor like Notepad, heaven forbid, which doesn't have the shortcut. Try not to use the shortcut in your first few HTML projects so you can build some muscle memory for writing the boilerplate code. All right, so we have an assignment. Watch and follow along to Kevin Powell's brilliant building your first web page video. We're not going to do that here, but I encourage you guys to do so. And I'm going to go ahead and mark this one complete.